All right, today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to change out your Tektro hydraulic brakes for your mountain bike. I've already kind of began before I had an idea to actually make this a video. So I'm just gonna kind of go through the steps that I've already gone through. I'm not that far into the process, but uh, I'll just kind of give an overview. Uh, I've already taken off the front wheel. I'm starting with the front since that's gonna be the easiest to do for you guys. Um, the reason I'm changing these out, by the way, is there is a slight leak in both right about there where the actual lever meets the caliper or not the caliper sorry the uh, reservoir so what i did so far is i took off one of my grips and then there is on this one right about here there's a small little allen hex key slot you need to loosen that up so i did that took this off and that's about as far as i've gotten and um, this is specific for my bike. Uh, I have the Trek Marlin 6, but I'm sure that if you have this brake set, the Tektro Auriga, you probably have a similar um, style bike. It'll be a pretty similar process. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take off, sorry for the focus, but my phone's a little on the old side. We're gonna go ahead and take off this little bolt right here because what that's doing is it's holding the line on and we want to obviously take that off if we're taking off the whole caliber and um, the line. So I'm just going to go ahead and loosen that. We're actually going to take the whole thing off so that the line can come off. All right, so now that we got that off, we're going to go ahead and move down to the actual caliber. And uh, this one should be pretty simple. Um, you just have to take off the two bolts, one over here and one under here. We'll flip the bike so you can get a, a, a better visual of it, but it's it's a really simple process. There's not that much to it for the front at least. So let's uh, go ahead and flip the bike over and do that. All right, and as I mentioned before, got the top bolt, bottom bolt here. Now, I honestly don't know exactly which size hex wrench you need. Um, because my uh, hexes all got mixed between metric and US standard, so I have no idea what any of those sizes are. But according to the documentation provided with the new set, looks like you need, according to them, a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench, a 3 millimeter, 4 millimeter, 5 millimeter, 8 millimeter, and a T25 Torx wrench. So it looks like uh, definitely some metric we got going on here. Um, but yeah, if you have a different bike, perhaps those may vary, but if you just get a full set of Torx wrenches, you should be fine. These are probably gonna be a little tight because of course you wouldn't want your caliper coming off during a downhill race. So hopefully the manufacturer is tightening them a little bit. As you can see here, there's a little bit of oil um, I think my shock is leaking. I'm not 100% sure if that's the caliper or the bottom of the shock there. I'm gonna go with shock since the top of that side is also leaking. Um, but yeah, about the brakes here, almost done. Taking this off. All right, so as you can see, we got the old one over here and the new one over here. Since this is a direct replacement, they are both the same size or so I hope. Uh, because they're the same model number so this makes the process a lot simpler uh, we do not have to bleed the system at all since we don't have to open up the system to you know shorten the hose we don't have to open it up to you know add fluid or anything it's already pre-filled from the factory so yeah let's go ahead and install this pretty much backwards from how we uninstalled it all right so we're just tightening up the new caliper onto the mount making sure it is completely on there and it's not going to slip off while I'm riding so um, you're going to notice that there's a little plastic piece do not take that off yet you're going to take that off at the very last step of reinstalling this whole front area and the reason that that's even there in the first place is if you hit the the lever or plunger whatever you want to call it it's going to squeeze the brake pads together and they're going to be stuck there and you have to pry them apart so that's why you want to have the plastic in there so that if you accidentally do squeeze it during um, the installation then you're not going to actually squish the pads together it'll get blocked by that plastic next step is to reinstall this little bracket so that way the hose sits flush onto the fork 
and uh, we can actually flip this bike over now so that way we can put that lever back on the handlebars. All right, so now that the bike is flipped back around, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall this lever and it's gonna be facing outwards because that's, well, that's how brakes work. You want it facing outwards. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and the bike's a little wobbly. I don't have a bike stand. You're gonna go ahead and position it however you want. If you like your brakes more up or down, that can be your choice. But once you tighten this back bolt right here, you are all good to go. And we can move on to the disc. This is gonna be the process of changing out this rotor with this new one. First, you're gonna to wanna to use a T25 Torx screwdriver to take off all of these bolts. And uh, you're gonna notice that there are two arrows. And the reason that there's two arrows is that indicates direction. What you're gonna to wanna to do is match up the new rotor direction with the old one. So just kind of keep a mental picture in your head of how it's set up now, because the new one's gonna go on exactly the same. So we'll start with taking these off. All right, so you're just gonna take off each and every one, and there are new ones that were supplied in the kit, luckily, so we can use brand new ones instead of reusing these old ones. Once you get all of the bolts off, you're gonna go ahead and slip the old one off and make sure you uh, pay attention to which way this arrow is pointing. And then you're gonna go ahead and slip the new one on and you're gonna kind of line it up with the bolt holes. So after you're done making sure these are nice and snug, we can go ahead and reinstall the wheel back on to the front of the bike. So I flipped the bike over just to kind of show you guys what's going on a little bit better. But now that we're done installing the caliber and the lever, you can go ahead and remove this plastic piece I told you not to. I would actually suggest keeping this for, um, let's say you want to take your bike on a road trip or you just want to go to the, uh, I don't know, bike park. You can keep this so that way when you take your wheels off, if you're loading your bike into a smaller car, then you do not have to you know, find something to stick into the brake pads or else you're gonna end up actually <laughs> causing those to squeeze as I mentioned before. But now that we are at the part where we actually have the wheel ready to go, I went ahead and took it off. So let's go ahead and install the wheel. So as you can see, the rotor just kind of slips in between the brake pads. You can adjust that if necessary. Uh, make sure you get enough clearance between the pads and the rotor. Um, but that's pretty much it other than putting the uh, grip back on. But that's pretty much it for the front half of the bike. Now we'll move to the slightly more challenging rear half. So the reason that I say the rear is a little more challenging is one, you're gonna have to deal with the rear derailleur when you take off the wheel. And two, you've got this very long hose that runs the length of the bike, which can be kind of a pain to deal with. You could see a little bit why I'm even replacing this in the first place. You got some leaking going on, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and skip taking off the wheel. You guys don't need to see that. I'm sure you know how to take off a wheel and it'll cut back time on the video. So since the wheel's off, we can have a better view of the rear caliper. As you can see, this one is set up a little bit differently. It has the two bolts going through the side of the frame rather than, I guess you would say, on top or directly in front. Um, but this one attaches to a secondary piece, which then attaches to the caliper. And the new one has a similar kind of setup and uh, it is a direct fit. So pretty much what you see here is what you see there. So we're gonna go ahead and take off the rear caliper along with the line that runs down the length of the frame and all the way down. So we're gonna go ahead and take these bolts off. Should be pretty simple. I've already uh, busted them loose a little bit so that way you guys don't have to see me struggle with my bolts here. Now that we got that off, you can see here that this is the part that attaches to the frame as I was mentioning, which then attaches to the caliber. Uh, that'll be the only way that you would get it on, at least on this model uh, bike. As I mentioned, these steps are for my bike specifically. They should be very similar to any other bike that uses the Tektro Ariga system, but I cannot be 100% positive that this is your frame style and that you even have these, you have the housing and everything. So just kind of take what I say and if it's not 100% correct, just understand that this system was made for multiple bikes. So you might have to alter my instructions just a little bit to get it to work for you. And if your brake lines are attached to the frame like 
how mine is, you're going to notice that it's a little bit hard to get these clips off and that's because they actually hook underneath this part right here in that little hole in the frame. So what you're going to need to do is grab something to pry it with. I have scissors because I cannot find my pocket knife but a knife would probably work better. Do not pry too hard because I'm not sure if you can get this exact piece anywhere else. But um, you're going to need to do that at least for the Marlin 6 along the entire length of the bike. And uh, after that we'll go ahead and take off the lever portion. And then after you secure it to the frame, don't forget that there are two bolts down here that secure the caliper to the part that secures to the frame. So make sure that you tighten those up, one on each side here. All right, and next step is you want to reattach all the clips to the housing. Make sure that the cable is flush with the frame. And you're gonna do that along the entire bike, just like you did when you took them off. Once you get all of your housing back on, it's gonna be much easier to get that lever on if you just put the back wheel on and flip it upright. Um, but this is also a good opportunity to, if you haven't cleaned your bike in a while, um, now that everything's pretty much apart back here, you can clean the chain, um, kind of clean up the derailleur if it's kind of filled with gunk. Uh, just make sure that everything is all in working order before you put it back together. That way you don't have to come back in a month when something else pops up and take it all apart again. And for changing the rear rotor, it's going to be the same exact process as the front one. I'm not even going to bother doing a video of it because it's literally the same exact thing as the front one. Take off all the bolts, make sure the new rotor goes on facing the right direction, tighten them back up and that's all you got to do. Also when putting the rear wheel back on, don't forget to take off this little plastic part kind of like what we did at the front. Now that we have the bike upright, we can go ahead and take the lever and put it on just as we did with the front brake and then you can move it around to your liking and then secure it with the back bolt just like the front one and then that will finish up for the most part everything for our brake change. And now that we're done with the entire process you may notice that when you test the new system you get quite a bit of rotor rub and the reason for that is the pads need adjusted for their width from this pad to the rotor and this pad to the rotor. Luckily that's a pretty easy task. It requires two people to do it correctly and to do it, in my opinion, the easiest way. So we'll go ahead and get someone to uh, help us adjust these and then we should be all ready to hit the road. So to begin the adjustment process, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to loosen these two bottom ones on the back. We'll start with the back. And the reason that we're going to do that is because we're going to have somebody push on the brake lever and that's going to align it's going to squeeze the pads to the rotor which is going to align this properly and then once we retighten it it'll be locked into the position that we need to have a little to none brake rotor rub so we're not going to want to loosen them too much just enough to where they're going to be able to move you're going to notice once you loosen the two bolts that the caliper will be able to wiggle you're going to want that because when they hit the brake lever it's going to shift into the optimal position then you'll tighten them locking that into position. Now we'll do the same thing to the front caliper by loosening that bolt and that bolt. Again, not too loose, just loose enough to where you can move it around with your fingers. As you can see, we can now move it around so we can stop loosening. So you're gonna have someone squeeze down the brake lever and then you're gonna go ahead and tighten these all the way down just as, uh, yeah, there we go. Kind of hard to do this one-handed. Just tighten them down to the appropriate torque. Make sure they're nice and snug. So now we're going to go ahead and switch and do the back one. And now you're going to have somebody hit the other lever. All right, and then you're going to come over here. And you're going to tighten this. Sure they're nice and snug. Keep squeezing it. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds a little weird, doesn't it? After adjustment, you can see here that we have absolutely no rotor rub at all. We'll go ahead and stop that. And then in the back, same story, no rotor rub at all. 
So that is how you change out your hydraulic brake system for your bike.